Good morning. My name is Detective Sergeant Graham Gibson of the Homicide Squad, and today I will be updating you on the murder of Abdul Monir and the shooting of a second victim, which took place at the Pizza Time restaurant located at 561 Markham Street in Toronto. The shooting occurred on September 14th, 2014, shortly after midnight. Video footage has been collected from the scene and the surrounding area, which show images of the suspect's vehicle dropping off what we believe to be a male suspect in the area, and there's also footage which shows this suspect being picked up at a different location. I'm gonna be showing you this video today, and the purpose of releasing this video is basically twofold. Uh, one, it's an attempt to trigger potential witnesses' memories. Witnesses may have seen something important that night, and they may not first uh, not have remembered it, but seeing video may trigger their memory, and they may realize that what they saw was actually important. So I'm gonna be urging them to contact me if they do see something which triggers their memory. Secondly, I'd like to be able to identif identify a potential witness. And I wanna stress that this is a witness. This isn't a, a person of interest or a suspect. And if this person recognizes himself in the video, or if somebody recognizes this witness, I want them to contact me personally at 416-808-7400 extension 77405. So if you're ready, we're gonna start the clips now. Now this first clip takes place on Sunday, as I mentioned, September 14th at about 12.07 a.m. And the video is gonna show a potential witness that we believe to be a female walking southbound on Markham Road toward number 561, which is the pizza time. So on our right, sorry, on the left of the screen, you'll see the uh, witness coming into view, and on the right side of the screen, the far top corner, you're going to see a white panel truck. Now that panel truck on the other side of that truck is the Pizza Time restaurant. You can't see it in this view. This is the witness coming into view. And then as the witness crosses to the area of the Pizza Time, you're going to see the suspect vehicle coming into, scene, into view from eastbound on Green Cedar Circuit to northbound. Markham Road, so it's going to come to the uh, top left of the screen. Now the witness is approaching the white panel truck, and they're going to be pretty much in front of the pizza time when you see the vehicle pull into view. You can see the vehicle now. It's a light-colored vehicle, and it's going to pull over in the next clip. So that was the vehicle that we're talking about. Uh, clip number two is going to show the vehicle pulled to the east side of 565 Markham, just north of the pizza time, and you're gonna see a male suspect ex exiting the passenger side of the vehicle and running toward that white truck, which you just saw. The vehicle leaves, and in the next clip, you're gonna see the vehicle made its way onto uh, northbound Markham to eastbound Lawrence Avenue, and there's a brief view of that vehicle on the top right of the screen. I'm going to move on to the next clip. And in this clip, the suspect can be seen running southbound on the east side of Markham Road towards number 561, 561 Markham Road. Again, you'll see that white truck, which borders the area between this plaza and the pizza time, which is just on the other side of that truck. So the suspect goes around that truck, and uh, it's at that time that the shooting occurs. The fifth clip is going to show you the suspect vehicle. And uh, this is taken from the Cedar Bray Library. That's the parking lot. And the vehicle is going to park in front of 35 Confederation Drive. And it stops there, and it's going to wait for the suspect following the shooting. You'll see that vehicle move slightly forward uh, a few feet. It's difficult to make out, but you can see the, the rear lights and the front headlights of that vehicle. And again, that's taken from the Cedar Bray Library, which is located on Green Crest Circuit. Okay. It basically stays there at that point. Now, in this next clip, the suspect can be seen running across the property of the Cedar Bray Library on Green Crest Circuit. And that's that same potential witness who might have heard or seen something. And they're following the suspect at a, lower, a slower pace. 
And then there's one more clip I want to show you. And in this clip, the suspect is seen re-entering the front passenger side of the suspect, suspect vehicle. You can see them running into frame now. They get into that vehicle, which then travels southbound on Confederation Drive. And then finally, you're going to see in this clip, once again, that same witness come into the bottom of the screen, moving quickly across the parking lot. And, and there they are there, out of scene. So those are the clips that I want to show you today. And again, I'm urging any witnesses who might have been in the area that night, if this helps refresh their memory, uh, tweak something that makes them think that they might have seen something, if they can give me a call at the Homicide Squad. And like I spoke uh, earlier about this witness, I'd like to speak with this witness if they can remember what they saw or heard that night. I believe it is. We've spoken to other people in the area, and they spoke about seeing this witness and describing her as wearing a, uh, a form of uh, headscarf and possibly living in the area from what they can remember. So that's why we believe that she's probably in that area. We have been unable to locate her despite our canvassing. You, know, you earlier mentioned that it seemed like the witness was following the suspect. Do you know why that may have been? Yeah, uh, again, after speaking to other witnesses, we believe she lived in that area. And she's only following the suspect, I believe, because she's on her way home and she wants to get inside. That's what we believe at this time. She has nothing to do with the suspect. Do you think she may have heard the shots? Her... I believe she would have been definitely in position to hear the shots. This, this happened at a pizza shop. Was there no video at the pizza shop that night? There is video at the pizza shop, but it's nothing that I'm going to be releasing today. Do you Wouldn't... have something else? There is, there is more video. We're constantly collecting video, and we're still collecting video in the area. Some it takes a little bit of time to process, but the, uh, the people in that area, the shop owners, have been very, very uh, helpful to us in supplying this video. What do you think she's being caught on video? Um, there is video inside. I'm not going to discuss what the video shows inside the premise. Can you just go over what you think the motive for this uh, murder might have been that night? I, and just paint the picture of what happened. For well, the despite morning. any evidence to the contrary, it appears that this pizza restaurant was possibly targeted by somebody wanting to rob it. And then the, uh, the victims of the shooting and the murder are employees. So I believe that they got caught up in this plan to rob the uh, pizza parlor. Did they take anything? I'm not going to discuss that. Can you remind us who you're looking for when the suspects look like the suspect vehicle? The description from a witness in the area is that it's a male black. He's taller, um, uh, about 30s, roughly, wearing a blue windbreaker. So if this was a, a robbery, was it their intention to kill these employees, or do you think it was a botched robbery? For me to speculate, I can't say. You know, it during the arrest, like you have some video in there. Can you sort of lead us yeah, to? Yeah, I can't discuss... Um, what happened at the scene. A lot of it has to do with speculation, and there is a survivor of the uh, incident that we will be speaking to. How is the survivor? Uh, still in critical condition in a hospital, and we will be speaking to them when they're able to medically, uh, when they're medically cleared and can speak. So you haven't been able to speak to that? Uh, Not at this time. No. Often when you do these, when you have these kind of cases, you look at other robberies in the area that may be similar. Um, have you been able to link it to any other cases? That's something that we're considering, but I won't be discussing any findings with regard to that. I think they may have been scoping the pizza joint just for the hours of its closing time. Uh, anything's possible. Hours are posted like they are at most businesses, so that is always a possibility. So had they just closed then? Uh, they closed. They're scheduled to close at midnight. Earlier this month, there was some talk about um, this being a targeted shooting, not because of robbery, but the, the actual victim, Abdul Munir, was targeted. Is that something that... That wasn't know? anything that we ever spoke about, and I don't have any evidence that Abdul Munir was targeted, despite for the fact that he was an employee of a pizza shop. Have you talked to his family recently back in Afghanistan here? I speak to his family every day, if, if not every second day, at least. How are they doing now? Very upset. They... Uh, they speak, they call me every day or they email me and I update them as best I can. That's a very busy intersection, as you know. It is. How, how do you explain the brazenness of this? Uh, how do they think? They must know that there's cameras around. You would think that people in this day and age would assume that or would know that. And you use the words brazen and I would agree with that. Are you have any better images on the suspect? This is what the best that I have to show you at this time. 
Has the family been able to, I know that they were talking about um, getting a, a body back home. Have they been able to arrange that yet, do you know? Um, that's, that's up to them. They're taking care of those arrangements. Uh, I don't want to assume that they have, but my belief is that they have. And, uh, sorry, going back to the family, even though you talk to them very often, what would you say is their focus right now? Do they, I, I'm guessing that they just hope that this will be solved soon? Well, yes. Um, like anybody would, they want, uh, they want updates. They'd like some closure. So I try to keep them updated with uh, the best information that I can, the most recent information. Are you willing to say how many shots were fired in and out of the pizza shop? Um, not at this time, no. Was the actual shooting inside or outside? Just Can you give us an idea of what uh, happened? It took place outside the restaurant. So can you explain how the, the victims came out? Or were, were they leaving? Or what exactly? I'd fire? have to speak with the victims, the surviving victim, too, to, uh, to the figure that out. show that? Um, the video that we have doesn't show. There's, it shows parts of what happened, but we're also missing some parts of the scene. And it was one of the victims who called 911, is that right? That's correct. Which one is the surviving victim? Yes. Are the suspects wearing any covering their faces during the I have no indication of that. Just one suspect or who went into the one shooter, right? Well, judging from what this video shows, that's my assumption. Has the hospital, the doctors, made any indication of when you might be able to speak with the second? I have no information on that. And no description at all any further about the person driving the suspect vehicle? No. What kind of vehicle do you think that is? Well, as you can see from the video, it's, uh, it's not easy to tell. We're looking at a number of different options, but I'm not about to discuss the variety of different vehicles that we've considered. Are you happy with how this investigation is progressing, given it's been a couple of weeks? And as John said, there, this is a busy intersection. A lot of people travel that way, and clearly there were witnesses in the area. Or are you feeling like you're up against you know, the fact that the community hasn't come forward? They haven't helped you as much as you'd like. Well, the community has helped us. They've helped us by supplying video, and witnesses have come forward and supplied us with information. All I'm simply doing today is asking for people who may not have realized that they've seen something important to give it a second thought and a, another consideration and call me if after seeing this it tweaks their memory. There was earlier talk about the vehicle being a Toyota. Is that not, is that off the table now or? Well, as, like, as I said, just from the video you can see that it's not easy to determine the type of vehicle. That's a possibility and it's something that we're continuing to work upon. Are you concerned, uh, given the nature of this crime, that these guys, the suspect, or these suspects are still out there? Am I concerned about? That they may reoffend, that they may target another business. Well, if somebody's going to, to rob a business and they've made up their mind to do it, there's, it's possible that they could reoffend. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen and by, through our investigation. And there's other units that are involved in assisting us in the investigation. Was there a rash of robberies in this area prior to this? I have no information to discuss that. The, the second victim was still in hospital. Can you just go over how many, it was he shot once or multiple times in what part of the body? I won't be discussing anything to do with his condition in the hospital. Do you think these guys live around there? They'll be shot? It's pure speculation. I wouldn't be able to say. I'm sorry, just to confirm, you have not spoken at all to the, the gentleman in hospital? Not at this point. But he did make the 911 call, correct? He did. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes today's conference.